Hey kids, Mr. Fly here, hope you're well. And welcome back to the channel for what I think is going to be an absolutely fascinating video. Okay, so what's the plan today then? Well, basically, I've jumped on the trusty GS, my workhorse bike. I'm riding down to uh, White Waltham, the airfield there, because uh, I was speaking to my mate and friend of the channel, Alan Milliard, the other day, and we were just casually talking about the Flying Milliard, his bike that's based on an aircraft engine. And I said to him that I'd never actually heard it run. And he said, well, we need to put that right. So basically, we agreed to meet up at uh, White Waltham today, because it so happens that's halfway between where we each live and uh, have a closer look at the bike, actually start her up and maybe even have a little bit of a ride on it. Right, well look who it is. I'm at uh, White Waltham, I'm with Alan Milliard. Great to see you again, Alan. Thanks for your time today. Yeah, thanks for the uh, trip up in the plane. Oh, no worries. We did do a little cheeky making Alan a proper flying milliard a bit earlier, because <laughs> we're here to talk about the flying milliard, which is the bike you see parked behind us. But before we get onto that, we haven't seen you for a little while on the channel, so what have you been up to? Well, I've been really busy filming with Henry, the motorbike show and that sort of thing. Yep. And especially the land speed record on the Viper V10. I saw that about two weeks ago. Uh, unbelievable. That was up at uh, Elvington, Elvington, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the runway there is, what was that, two miles two long? Two miles long. So we, had, we did the standing start one mile, standing start 1.25 mile. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you what, I've got a feeling the sun's in the wrong spot. This shows how we're amateurs. There we go. We'll come back with a bike, to be honest, isn't it? So, yeah, so two mile long runway. Yeah. And marked out at uh, one mile and yeah. 1.25 miles. And are you actually able to see that as you're doing the speed? Yeah, yeah, there's big checkered flags. Right, so you, you know when you've gone through it. So the record itself was for the fastest motorcycle with a pillion, wasn't it? Yes, tandem motorcycle, they call it, with two people. And the previous record was? 181 point something. And you did? 183.5. Absolutely nuts, and that was with Henry on the back, Henry wasn't on the it? back, yeah. He's not, uh, not, and I mean, he doesn't look like he's a particularly light fellow, unlike yourself. He's, he's a bit heavier than me. Yeah, so that's like <laughs> the worst top box ever, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. So was there anything about it that uh, was more tricky than you thought, or was it about I, what I, you thought? I, I overgeared the bike, so it's only got one speed. It's geared for, 100, geared for 225 miles an hour. Unbelievable. At 6,000 yeah. revs, I should have geared it for 200. Yeah. So we're pulling away from the standing start. Yeah. With two up and we still beat the world record for the standing one mile and standing 1.2 mile. Unbelievable, that's absolutely brilliant. And if you want to see it, you can still see it because it's on Television yeah, X, I, isn't I, it? ITVX, ITVX. Television ITVX. X is something else. Yeah. Uh, ITVX, was it episode five. six or five, episode something like five. that? Check it out there if you want to go and see the, the land speed record. Brilliant attempt. Anyway, we come here today to, swap that around, an airfield uh, because this bike has an aircraft engine in it. Now, we, we, we spoke uh, yesterday on the phone, and I said to you, we were just randomly talking, and I said, you know, I've never heard the Flying Milliard start. And you said, we need to put that right. Hence why we're here today, yeah? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it might be, we even get a ride on it as well. So, what can, tell me about the bike then. What's the history? Well, the, the cylinder's from a Pratt & Whitney Wasp R1830, so it's about 2,500cc a cylinder. And the Pratt & Whitney Wasp, if you're an aviation fan like me, was a big radial, yeah? Seven and nine cylinders. And they made it over a number of years, didn't they, and lots of variants. Yeah, from like 1920 up to about 1950, I believe. Unbelievable, because I know it, I think, from the Corsair, the Vought Corsair, the big naval swing, yeah. folding wing thing. Yeah. Also, it's in the uh, Harvard or the T6 Texan, isn't it? And the DC-3s and dc DC-3, yeah, the uh, Dakota. Yeah. Uh, so all sorts of proper, big, powerful aeroplanes, aren't they? Six-inch diameter pistons, so it's just massive. It's just nuts, isn't it? And, and those planes, they are um, they tend to be supercharged, don't they? They are supercharged, So, yeah. So what's the story here? Have you thought it was supercharging it? No, I, I built the bike to ride. If, if I supercharge it, it would never start it. I have to start it by hand with a jump, jump lever. Sure. So it's low compression, everything, the camshaft's all sort of slack, so it's all low, low power. Yeah, brilliant. The main thing is it starts and runs and rides. Fantastic. And uh, it being an aero engine, I know from my, just my own simple flying, it, it, Starting an aeroplane engine isn't as straightforward as just turning a key, is it? No. Can you talk us through what the starting procedure is? So we go and have a look at the bike and do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder if I come around this side, yeah. get better light. Before you do, though, I mean, just the workmanship on it, I love this. This is it, my flight control centre. I mean, that looks like a, a quadrant in an aircraft. Is that, is that the idea? It's part of the design to try and get the aircraft theme into the motorcycle. Well, you've certainly succeeded. I mean, it looks, I mean, it looks like something out of the 1920s, doesn't it? So the first thing you have to do is turn the oil on. Yep, OK. So it's already on, so you turn the oil on. Fuels in the tank up here. And is that just gravity fed? It comes around on a pump. Okay. It's got a Honda Fireblade pump. Right, okay. It pumps quite a lot of oil. Yeah, brilliant. On here, you've got the mixture, so you have to set it to rich. Yep. Then the ignition has to be on minimum on retard. Okay. If, if you leave it there, it'll kick back and throw you up in the air. Okie dokie, that sounds a little bit squirrely. That, that's it, the petrol has to go on. What's, on the that, other what's side. that there that says contact then? That's the ignition. Oh, okay, you just literally pull it. So there's no key or anything? No key, you just pull the ignition out, then you right. put the kickstart lever on, turn the engine, and it should start. I remember from before when we talked about the kickstart lever, isn't it like an adapted spanner that you have? Yeah, around here. Right? So that's here. Cool. 
which is an old ratchet spanner. And have you had that experience with it kicking back I at you? I have, it hurts. <laughs> so this has got a one-way clutch on here, so it only goes one way. Right. So what I have to do is get it up to compression. Like that. I'm loving that sucking noise. Ignition on, a little bit of throttle. Sometimes it starts, sometimes it doesn't. Okay, I'll take that. Oh, you can actually see it going through the pump. Yeah. I hope you can see that on the camera. That's a, that's a tidal wave of oil, isn't it? Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. Oh, I'm loving these clocks as well. Superb. Look at this, the shake, rattle, and roll. Incredible. When I, when I stop it, I have to always give it a rev and then kill the ignition. Right. And what it does, the piston sucks loads of fuel in the cylinder for the next time it starts. Okay, so it's almost like pre priming. Pre primed. Oh, right, it'll, okay. It'll always go first kick now. Wow, and this here is the gear lever, I Gear see. lever, I've got first, second, third, and fourth, and reverse. Do you know what the weight of the bike is? Because a reverse gear is very handy on things like my Goldwing. This looks to me very, very heavy, is it? It's probably about 600 pounds. So what's, right. what's really nice about the reverse, you can back it up into parking spaces. Exactly. It's I don't really, know why really more nice. big bikes don't have it. Doing three-point turns, because it's quite long, you do three-point turns on the road, you've got first and reverse. So this actually isn't anywhere near as heavy as it looks, is it? Really? No, no. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's no heavier than like a, a decent adventure bike, is it? That's correct, because the cylinders are off an aeroplane, so they're light. Of course. But the crankshaft weighs 145 pounds. Right. So, Alan, this front end looks like, it's, is this called Gerda Forks? Gerda Forks, yeah, it's how they used to be in the old days with twin springs. Right. And this is an original 1930s AA badge. Cool. For breakdown. It looks very original. Did you make the forks as well? I did, I made I, everything. I'm almost embarrassed to have asked you that question now. I do apologise. I made the Speedo, yeah. the carburetors. I've got to have another look at the Speedo, it's just... Uh... It's the same size as the pistons. The pistons are six inches diameter. Oh, is that why you did it like that? That is the same that size as the pistons. And I love the clock as well. So you're never, never late for an engagement. <laughs> yes, <laughs> fantastic. And the horn. And the horn. <laughs> I'm guessing, I'm guessing there's not too many riding modes on this. No, you've got a button for horn there, and that's it. <laughs> Basically, this, all my riding modes are here. So I have to run yes. down along the road, I have to adjust the mixture here, yep. adjust the ignition timing depending on the road conditions. I love that. That is very aircrafty, isn't it? Beautiful. So, Alan, tell me about the, the exhaust. This, I think it's a fishtail exhaust. They call this style, don't they? Straight through, yep. three inch diameter pipe with a fishtail exhaust on the back. The fishtail silence is actually quite an effective silence, so we take that off and it's really loud. It sounded pretty loud to me as it was. With that on, it's quite quite acceptable. Wow, wow, great. At night time, going up hills, you get flames coming out the back. I wonder why they don't use those anymore. Uh, maybe it's a looks thing, I don't know. Perhaps but I won't can't, can't, can't look at Yeah, perhaps. Got the heat shields on the side. And tell me about the carburetors, because they're homemade as well. They're homemade from scratch out of a block of aluminium, because you can't get a carb for two and a half litre one cylinder engine. Cool. So cool. I made two of them. And no uh, air filters that I can see on no, there? No, so. old bikes don't have air filters. So you're, not, so you're not worried about sucking in a bit of gravel or something? The pistons are so loose in the bores, they just go down the side. Really? Cool. <laughs> one, one, one millimetre clearance. Really? That's... And, that's, and that's mid limit. It's up to 60 thousandths of an inch clearance. That's amazing. You know, about 45 thousandths. And so the compression's good? Well, you saw me jump on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> wow. Do you know what the... Um, have you ever dynoed it or do you know what the... No, I'm not interested. I just wanted to make it tick over reliably, start OK, and ride along nicely in yeah. traffic. Yeah, yeah. And it'll cruise along at 65 quite happily, 55, 60. And dare I ask what the fuel economy is, he says. It's from really, really bad to really, really, really bad. <laughs> it's brilliant. So I think you rode, what, 20, 30 miles here down the back roads well, today? I'll, is I'll, that I'll, a tank full? It won't go here and back on a tank. You're kidding me. Yes, and how big's the tank? Three and a half gallons. Quite an expensive trip then. Chain oiler there, that's for a, bit, a few drips as you go, yeah? Yeah, it down, comes, down, comes out down here. Just to, maybe make it work, oh, actually. Right. It smells good. There's something about... I've got air in the system. Vehicles of this vintage, isn't there? Well, not that this is vintage, but type. It smells of engineering, Alan, and I like it. Yeah, oh, there, there we go, there, there we go. go. So we've got a bit, there we go, excellent. Look at that. Bit of uh, chain oiling. And the uh, exposed clutch, no issues with that being no, exposed? No, that's off a Pan European. Right, OK, but you know well. I know, know really well, and that's run great for 10,000 miles, maybe. There's actually a harbour that parks in the hangar over there, and it just it's amazing that this has the same, the same engine. Anyway, how many miles have you done on so far? 9,470. So quite experienced on it, and uh, you said you could let me have a little go on the back? Yeah, you, you can sit right back there. <laughs> now, I'm a bit of a rubbish <laughs> pillion, but uh, should we go and uh, do a, the second bit of flying mill yard of the day? Definitely, a little loop round. Right, here we go then. Here goes nothing. <laughs> I trust Alan implicitly, but I'm actually going to have a go on the back of this 
Uh, the 360 is going to be wobbling away, but it's going to be interesting. So, uh, all right, thanks, Alan, for this. Be safe with me. Okay, here we go. I'm on. Yep. I'm a rubbish pillion, me. This sort of thing frightens me, so uh, <laughs> this is fantastic. Well, now that is what you call a lazy engine. Loads of speed bumps here. Testing Alan's uh, control. I've got the biggest grid on my face ever. I really don't want to wriggle around and put uh, Alan off because he was telling me how difficult it is to balance this with the big tiller handlebars. And having ridden a few larger motorcycles myself, I can only imagine <laughs> how difficult that is. Listen to it, it sounds more like a steam engine than a motorcycle. It's fabulous. I tell you what, it's dead comfy up here. It's a really high riding position and this seat is uh, got some good suspension on it or springs I should say uh oh got a red light coming up I don't know how much planning has to be done to stop this I'm not going to put my feet down I'm going to let Alan use all his powers of concentration is that light going to change before we have to stop no isn't it annoying when that happens right I'm not going to wriggle not wriggling not wriggling <laughs> I can slightly feel my left calf burning slightly on that exhaust. <laughs> oh, you've got to do a bridge or a tunnel, haven't you? How good was that? I thought the bike had no mirrors, but I've just noticed there's a little brass mirror by uh, Alan's right hand there to give him all he needs. I'm loving I hope with the GoPro you can actually see round Alan and the big clocks. It just looks superb. What a fabulous experience. So uh, the deal was I get a ride on the flying mill yard and I take mill yard flying. So that was a pretty good swap if you ask me. Uh, massive thanks to Alan for letting me do this. This is not something that many people get the chance to do. So uh, huge honour for me. I'm mesmerised by the uh, suspension on the front actually. A bit like on my Goldwing where you see the tops of the forks bouncing around. You can see that girder fork doing its thing. Oh, that was bumpy. <laughs> Other cars on the road must think what on earth is going on. When you consider when this was uh, in an aeroplane application, this probably revved up to, I don't know, 2,000, 2,500 RPM. So low revving compared to a motorcycle. But... Uh, in this configuration on the flying mill yard it sounds like it's ticking over it sounds like it's ticking over at uh, three or four hundred rpm it's basically idle corners beautifully doesn't sound like the sort of bike that you want to go touring on particularly well, I'm sure it's very possible to do so. Loving the old school hand signals. When I went flying with Alan just now, he said he was, he thought it was quite complicated flying and there was a lot that you had to do. Well, I, I think riding this bike is probably just as, if not more complicated. Absolutely brilliant. That's amazing. All oh, right. Yeah, it doesn't feel like 50 miles an hour idle, but it just poodles along. Oh, I've spent a long time since I've had such a big grin on my face for such a prolonged time. This is absolutely epic. Excellent. The lights are changing for us. Here we go through the tunnel. It's got to be done, Alan. It's got to be done. Okay, another corner coming up. Concentrate. Don't wiggle, Andy. Don't wiggle. It's actually 
quite cool being a pillion, I could get used to this. Yep. Well, how much fun has today been thanks to the world of motorcycles and aircraft as I depart the area having just watched Alan disappear on the incredible flying mill yard. What an absolute machine that is. It uh, caused quite a stir at the airfield, I can tell you. We had a spot of lunch after we did that little interview and uh, there's quite a crowd gathering around the bike and uh, rightly so both beautiful to look at listen to and to ride brilliant stuff so thank you very much indeed alan for uh, spending the time with me he's a lovely bloke really interesting of course and uh, fascinating to have a chat with him we have some plans for possible future videos so do stick around and stay tuned for those and uh, obviously i'll tell you more about those at the time in the meantime, if you've not hit the subscribe button, please consider doing so. It'd be great to have you along to the next video. I don't just do bits and pieces about flying and aeroplanes and motorcycles on the channel, but also do, hello sir, I also do monthly bike news, bits and pieces about looking after your bike in the garage, bike reviews, trips and tours, anything and everything to do with motorcycles, I'll try and cover it here on the Mission and Fly. It'd be fantastic to have you along, so do hit that subscribe button, and that way I can see you on the next video. Right, I'm gonna get home before the rain starts. And uh, yeah, look forward to speaking to you soon. Until then, this has been the Missed and Fly. Cheerio.